Pat Hartman, please. Oh, that's all, Pat. You bring your guitar today, Pat? Did not. Hi, my name is Pat Kirtley. Um, I'm not here about the pipeline, um, although it's something I'm concerned about. And I don't think there's going to be a pipeline in Nelson County. I don't think we're going to let that happen. And um, because we're vigilant about such things and we care about our place. Um, what I'd like to talk about is something that um, I would not interrupt these proceedings about the pipeline to even talk about it. But it's happening right this minute. It's happening right now. Um, and it's about the, the tree cutting on US 62 uh, from the county line coming towards Bardstown. And uh, I spoke to Judge Watts several times about it. He's been very attentive to this and about my own personal situation. I'm a property owner on US 62, about six miles out. That's where we live. And um, um, we've talked about my personal situation. I appreciate your attention to it. But I am also would, would like to talk to the the fiscal court could, and Pat, could, could we uh, uh, have your discussion at the tail end of this public hearing? Absolutely, these folks have come, and we will Abs listen to it. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Please. Clear. McGowan. And Pat, we will call it. Just to be fair, the folks have come that have to leave. <coughs> My name is Claire McGowan. I'm one of the Dominican sisters from St. Catherine, and I live here in the Spring Hill subdivision. <laughs> um, my concerns are two, and they more involve the magistrates than they do the company. Um, the first is that heavy equipment would be needed to construct such a pipeline if we were to go forward with it. Um, has the court plan to require legal agreements that would guarantee that the cost of any damage to our roads would be covered by the company because we taxpayers in this county cannot afford to fix any more roads that are damaged by a project like this. The second is um, I have read that maintaining the pressure that will be required to um, push 400,000 barrels a day of natural gas liquids through these pipelines is going to require pumping stations every 10 to 30 miles. The pumping stations, according to what I've read, are run on diesel or possibly gas. They're constant, so it's 24-7. They're going to make a lot of noise and they're going to make a whole lot of pollution, ozone and other kinds of dangerous pollutants. So what would the court require of the company to minimize the air pollution and the noise pollution that would come from running these pumps every 10 to 30 miles? And the landowner, I assume, doesn't have a choice about whether a pumping station is going to come with a pipeline, because those are going to have to go at regular intervals. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes. No, that's a Thank you for getting to the point, Susan. The issue about pump stations, um, first of all, the, the design capacity of the line right now is 200,000 barrels a day. Um, it's expandable up to 400,000 without, without laying any additional pipeline by adding additional compression. Um, right now, for the 200,000 barrel uh, capacity uh, design, uh, requires one pump station along the the entire 500 and 550, 500 some odd mile route. Uh, and that location hasn't been determined yet, but it won't be in Kentucky, it'll be in Ohio. Um, so hope that helps there. Um, the, uh, as far as any pollution is concerned, um, the uh, facilities, well, two things. As far as the pollution is concerned, we are required to meet the same air, air quality regulations that the state of Kentucky requires of all businesses and all operations. So we will have, uh, to, if we had a pump station in Kentucky, then we would be uh, filing for that air permit and required to meet those standards. Um, the other thing is with regard to pump station locations, um, any above ground facilities, the valves that I mentioned before, pump stations, uh, meter sites, um, those are not included in, in any kind of the normal pipeline 
facilities, if you will, because they're spaced far apart. And, uh, and so when, when we require that kind of, of equipment, those kinds of facilities, then that's a separate additional agreement uh, uh, between the company and the landowner and it's additional money that would be required for those facilities. So I hope that's helpful. Call on uh, Les Courtney. I want to thank you all for being organized and allowing us this process in an orderly fashion. To uh, my name is Les Courtney, and I'm here in a sense on behalf of a, a growing organization combined of Ohioans and Kentuckians called uh, the Bluegrass Pipeline Blockade. And over the last two weeks, I've done uh, extensive research of uh, different notes that I could throw out in regards to Williams Medical, or sorry, Williams Companies and their subsidiaries. Uh, but today I'd like to touch on just a couple points that have already been spoken about. Uh, first off, uh, Mr. Uh, Wendell Hunt, right? That's correct. Um, I'm just cu mainly curious if uh, Williams is currently operating under the Federal Corrective Action Order issued by the Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration in connection with the massive natural gas explosion that occurred at Williams' own pipeline in Alabama on December 3rd, 2011. That would be very appreciative. I kind of assumed as a lawyer you would know about the legal aspect of those. Um, but on a side note, I just, uh, he's done. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, you, oh, I thought hey, you were introduced as a lawyer earlier. I am an attorney. However, I do not practice law for the company. I do not handle any legal matters. Okay. Uh, on a side note, on that, one thing that Sonia had mentioned earlier, the uh, uh, Louisiana factory that exploded, uh, that factory had actually went two decades without OSHA in, uh, investigations. Uh, so this company, or this um, place where, in a sense, some of the fuel that's going to be going through Kentucky was heading to, was not even investigated by our own government officials for 20 years. Um, directed towards uh, Mr. Hawks, uh, you had said earlier that the company will take steps to ensure the safety of the pipeline, um, but back in March of 2000, uh, your own special company um, qualifications that you have to ensure that the pipeline continues operating properly, uh, but back in March of 2000, or March 5th of 2012, uh, Williams Partner subsidiary, uh, the Transcontinental Gas Pipeline Company, LLC, was fined $50,000 by the PHMSA for failure to follow its own internal policies related to controlling external corrosion in natural gas pipelines running through the New York City borough of Staten Island. So if, what I want to know is if the company is currently being fined, then how can you tell us that we can trust that you're going to follow your own regulations when you're being fined for not following those regulations. Um, also, uh, you had also informed us earlier that the uh, the pipelines were uh, let's see, uh, that they were maintained 24/7 to catch up on leaks. Uh, when actually on uh, May 1st of 2003, there was a failure in Lewis County, Washington, on December oh sorry on, on December 13th. Um, there was no fire, uh, but the gas flowed for three hours before it was shut off. Uh, gas pressure had already been reduced 20% because of a pipeline explosion that had occurred on May 1st of that year, and this pipeline had already received four leaks or explosions in the course of eight years. So one pipeline had six leaks in eight years, yet these are perfectly safe. But that's all I have to say, and I thank you all for letting me come out. Stephen Howard. Good morning, everybody. My name is Stephen Howard. I'm from New Haven. Um, I'm going to be quick. I just wanted to point out that uh, 32 years old, and ever since I was a kid, we've been doing earthquake drills because we're sitting on the New Madrid fault line. And as, as some of the other people have pointed out, there is uh, sinkholes, the water aquifers, it's like a honeycomb underneath. And from what it seems like that I've seen from where Sonia pointed out, where the pipeline is going to be running, it's 
mainly if you know the area, we are sitting on a shelf and it's a lot of knobs and uh, slate and shell underneath that will actually slide. So I don't know if you gentlemen um, realize the area that you're going to try to run a pipeline through, but even the event of a minor earthquake, um, what, uh, what mitigation factors would you have as far as containing movement, movement, yeah, of the movement of the lines? Because honestly, the last time the, um, the New Madrid went off, uh, I think what Real Foot Lake was made, a couple rivers shifted, and uh, if you got a buried pipeline, it's going to blow apart in many places. And how, um, how would you mitigate stopping that many thousands of gallons, hundreds of thousands of gallons from getting into the aquifer in this area? So that's, that's all I wanted to point out that uh, you, you're, um, you're, you're thinking about running a pipeline through a very, very, very dangerous area. So thank you all very much. Lindsay McMahon, is that right? Hello, uh, I'm Muncie McNamara. Uh, I'm an attorney here in town, um, and aside from the fact that I'm looking forward to doing a lot of workers' comp cases for some of your employees that get hurt on the line, uh, I, uh, uh, I do, yeah, we specialize in comp, that's fine. So, um, uh, but aside from that, uh, a lot of people have touched on it, um, uh, asking about the benefit to the individual property owner and the effects on the groundwater, and of course our groundwater is very important because it's what makes our bourbon good and our horses fast. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it seems to me that um, this pipeline starts up north and is supposed to go all the way down to the Gulf, and it's just kind of running through a bunch of states, and Kentucky is another state that's just a conduit for moving this gas through. And I'm just curious um, if you could quantify what the, what the benefit to the state is, to the Commonwealth, to the county, to the city of Bardstown, because if it runs through here, uh, even the individual landowners, I mean, what, what do we get out of it unless we go buy stock in your company? Uh, you talked about training our EMS to deal with potential hazards. Uh, are you going to cover the cost if there are additional expenses incurred by our EMS, if there's additional hazard pay, um, if there is some kind of a spill? I mean, you can't pay enough to recover groundwater, but I mean, the, the concerns about the heavy equipment ruining our roads, the loss of our trees and things like that. I, I mean, I appreciate that you're here trying to explain to us the safety, um, and I know people have pointed out the issues with that, um, but just what, can you quantify for us what the benefit is to us of, of allowing this pipeline to come through our backyards? Benefit to me is I agree that most landowners will not be able to use directly, probably none of the landowners in Nelson County will use directly any of the products that are flowing through the pipeline. However, there will be some benefit to the county and to the jurisdictions through which the pipe flows. There will be some tax benefits as a result of being located in the areas. There are some benefits that are what I would call general benefits uh, with the the need to decrease for the, the, with replacing some of the imports into the country for things that we use like plastics um, for car bumpers or uh, uh, plastic parts for lawn mowers uh, uh, various things that we use every day those things are being we're either importing oil or we're importing the plastics from other places China Korea, we would become a little more self-sufficient in being able to produce those things here at home. I agree with you. Not every landowner will be able to get a product off the pipeline, but we will be able to, as a country, be able to produce more here at home. Wendell mentioned the, the tax benefit in the county that's under ad valorem taxes uh, that uh, you might may or may not be familiar with. Um, not knowing how much distance uh, mileage would be in the in the county, then we wouldn't be able to quantify um, that uh, impact until until we've set a finalized route. Um, 
as far as uh, as far as other values, especially the Commonwealth, um, the uh, uh, on either side of the state, as far as the Ashland area, and then on the other side of uh, Owensboro around uh, Calvert City and Paducah, uh, there are facilities that uh, either generate and or use these natural gas liquids as feedstocks, and uh, the the line, the Texas gas line, the boardwalk line that we're connecting with uh, over in Hardensburg, uh, that line runs about five miles away from that Calvert City uh, fractionator. Um, so this would, has the potential to provide a new source of supply for that facility uh, located in the state, in the, in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Um, right now, uh, there aren't any businesses that I know of along the route that we have proposed within uh, the state or within the Commonwealth. Um, but um, that can change. Uh, because it's a common carrier, anybody can put uh, liquids in, in one end of the line and pull it out at any point along the line. All they need to do is build a facility to be able to do that and, and to be able to utilize that. And once a fractionator essentially excuse me, a fractionator essentially takes that, those natural gas liquids and breaks it out into its components. So those of you that are, that are uh, using propane, um, uh, those of you that, that uh, would use uh, butane, <clears throat> those components are things that, that uh, serve other markets. Um, it's just a matter of, of whether um, someone would like to take advantage of that opportunity once that supply um, starts to starts to kill them. So. I'm sorry, I have just a really quick question. So the 200,000 barrels of natural gas liquid that's coming through, is all of that staying within the United States? Are you saying everything that's changed out, is all that staying here in the U.S. and going to help us here in the U.S.? <laughs> if you grow an acre of corn and you sell it, I don't know where that corn goes. Again, you you again, may be able to tell. all of that... 200,000 barrels of natural gas liquid, is all of that staying in the United States, those components? Well, they benefit the United States, every bit of that. That's my question. Everything that the United States would need from that supply would be met. Yes, <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. I knew where that